Okay, YouTubers, I wanted to show you again how I like to start working a set of these Cathedral Port LS cylinder heads. Um, these are the 862s that were opened up to the two inch intake valves. But I wanted to show you, it's just a process of creating land, like a landmark in your port so that you have something to work to and in between so that you don't dig down too deep into your port and cause problems with you know flow dynamics poking holes into water jackets or any of that junk so i just wanted you guys to kind of get an idea now this let's just assume we've already done our bowl cut percentage because i had this valve job done with a cnc machine so my bowl cut other than my finishing uh, texture and all that has been done so assume we've already done our bowl cut percentage so now i'm moving down into the port and i'm going to start doing my valve guide shaping or reduction and swirl uh, setting my landmarks for my swirl ramp removal so check this out all right youtubers i apologize i don't have the proper setup to be able to show action shots because the tripod and the camera literally sits directly in line where I have to work. But I just wanted to show you, here is the un, unworked, unmodified 862 uh, valve guide boss and swirl ramp. So basically what I start out with is this large single cut uh, non-ferrous flame and what I'll do is I'll just start whittling down this bell or reverse funnel. What this used to do when it was factory was it kind of helped any air that was uh, directed towards your valve guide or valve stem. It kind of forced it outward away from the stem by using kind of a, a reverse funnel effect, I guess, would be a good way to explain it. But what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to pull all that off. When you start working this slowly, just think of flattening that out. Just bringing it down to the material that's below it. Because here in a second when I move the tripod over, you'll hopefully be able to see how bulbous that aluminum material is at the top of that guide uh, guide boss right below the guide itself it literally has a huge bulbous funnel for lack of better term apparently i need to look up the appropriate term for that shape so first of what i'm going to do is just you know slowly bring that down to where it's uh, even with the rest of the guide that's below it because I try my best not to overly reveal the guide during the finishing processes and so keep that in mind anytime you're doing your porting it's a multi it's a multi-step process so don't try to always cut to your final objective and you will work to that objective when you get to your sanding roll so always leave a little bit of meat in that port in the areas where you're going to finish it later. That way you don't end up cutting too far and messing something up. Remember that. Leave a little meat so that you can slowly shape it and give it its final port texture later. Okay, here's a good example. Here's the port right next to it where I've started working it. So what, we've, what I've done... Is to start taking that bulbous bell right at the top of that uh, casting for the guide boss and bringing it down to match the material below it and I'm going to try to tilt this tripod to give you a little better angle if you look down below you can still see it's bulbous on the right hand side because I've only I've gone as far as I can go with the bit I'm using but if you look over on the left side, 
we've almost brought it down to where we can blend it to the guide at the bottom. I hope you guys can see that. But that big bulbous area at the top will be brought down to where it, it, it blends seamlessly into the material at the bottom of the guide, but not without, you know, don't take so much off that you just reveal the whole guide because then you're gonna lose all your structural integrity for the valve guide boss itself. But just keep in mind, we're gonna work that down where it's you know for the term everybody always uses is organic we're going to blend it smoothly where it is less of a flow restriction in the area behind our valve stem and valve guide but we're not going to you know butcher it out and cut so much of it that we're just making it paper thin where it's going to crack or break or do something stupid in the future if we have to have the valve guides replaced because keep in mind you might be creating a set of heads that's worth two thousand plus dollars to somebody you don't want to make it where they can't service the head and change the guides and keep it in service so work that guide boss down slowly and you'll see as I go through this process how I start here so that I can set my landmarks to uh, just removing the top because you're really only going to be removing the top portion of the swirl ramp you're not going to be digging near the base of it not very much even in the middle you're just going to blend it into your guide uh, profile and then blend it into that part of the bowl into the back wall which you know you, you can see my other videos but I'm gonna do the process here on this set of heads but I just want to make sure you guys understand we're not going in here and butchering out a whole bunch of, them, of material we're just enhancing what's there you know what I'm saying we are not uh, creating a brand new port out of a, of a raw casting ahead we're just ba basically enhancing certain areas of this port to make it flow more air especially in the 400 to 600 lift range where we want to make our power so anyway that's where i'm at i wanted to try to show you guys a little bit of the work uh i apologize i failed again at trying to do a you know action video because apparently you just cannot set this camera up in a fashion that allows me to get in here and try to control my tool to show you what i'm doing so you hold that thought.